Dr. Shabir Ali, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure to be on. Now, we are looking at prophets in the, in the Bible and the Quran. It's interesting that the Abrahamic religions all have prophets. What do you think the purpose of prophets was? Uh, they essentially conveyed news from God. Um, and that's what the, the term uh, Naba in, in, um, in Arabic and, and also in the related Hebrew uh, essentially seems to mean that uh, the prophet brings us news that we wouldn't otherwise be privy to. Mm -hmm. So we are doing a comparison of the different uh, prophets within the Bible and the Quran. What do you think that that comparison will reveal? It's not that sort of comparison in which we're going to try to show that one is better than, than the other, but uh, it is a, a way of learning the information by comparison and, and contrast to know specifically what does the Bible say, specifically what does the Quran say, so that in our minds the, the two bits of information are not mixed up together, but, but we understand each better in the light of the other. Uh, so, so we'll know more specifically what does the um, Bible say about these specific prophets, what does the Quran say about these specific prophets, and how, how we can absorb all of that information without mixing them up. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that there are these different accounts of the prophets in the Bible and the Quran? Mm, uh, these uh, pro uh, uh, prophets are presented in both uh, scriptures as uh, models for humankind. They are representatives of God. Uh, the, uh, the term prophet also uh, seems to indicate that this is a spokesperson for God. Uh, so uh, as spokespersons for God, how did they live their lives? Uh, what messages did they preach? And how should we live those messages in our time? To what ex extent are Muslims dependent on the, the biblical narratives of the prophets to understand our prophets better because you know the Quran when it talks about the prophets just speaks about them in a piecemeal manner like there are just a few if you look at Adam for the story of Adam it's like scattered in different parts of the Quran mm -hmm. um, so to what extent do we rely on the biblical narrative to kind of fill in the picture to a large extent, uh, because without the biblical narrative, we wouldn't understand what the what the Quran is talking about. The Quran is speaking about these prophets, as you said, in a piecemeal manner, a little bit here and a little bit there. Uh, you could, by trying to piece all of the bits of the Quran together, form a, a more comprehensive view than if you were looking at only one part. But the most comprehension will uh, occur when we take into account the biblical narrative as well. Now, the classical Muslim scholars uh, uh, did uh, realize the importance of getting the information from Jews and Christians, uh, but often the information that they got and, and which they represented in the books of commentary on the Quran uh, is what they derived orally. And uh, often what they derived orally... Um, what do you mean derived orally? They heard it from Jews and Christians who were living around them? Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, often what they heard and represented in their commentaries are uh, very different from what is in the Bible. So what this means for a Muslim-Christian dialogue today uh, and dialogue between Muslims and our Jewish uh, uh, friends is that uh, a Muslim may think that, that they know from the books of uh, commentaries on the Quran uh, the details that are not mentioned in the Quran and that must have come from the Bible, they would assume. And, and so when they're speaking, uh, our Christian and Jewish friends would be looking at the Muslim a little funny because mm -hmm. the Muslim is saying something about the stories of the previous prophets that, do not, uh, that, that does not gel with uh, what what the Christian and Jew finds in the Bible. So it is essential for Muslims to know this information, uh, to know firsthand from the Bible itself, what does the Bible actually say about these great prophets. Mm -hmm. And then as a Muslim, how do you decide which, which parts of the bi biblical narrative are not part of the Muslim narrative? How do you make that distinction? Well, the, the cautious Muslim approach would be to say, uh, first and foremost, the Quran is the word of God for us. And uh, we want to fill in the blanks that are left by the Quran by getting other bits of information. But we'll take those bits of information which are compatible with the general Quranic presentation of these prophets. So a few principles here to bear in mind that will be um, uh, 
surrounding, see in this series, this yes. Series, mm -hmm. yeah. One is that uh, from the Quranic perspective, the prophets are good models for humankind. Uh, so a Muslim will tend to uh, look askance at any bit of information that seems to present uh, the prophets as uh, morally of a low standard. We, we would want to see that there are good standards for the rest of humankind. Uh, we would want to see that uh, the prophets uh, present a consistent message. Uh, this is what uh, others would refer to as canonical interpretation. When we look at uh, any specific passage uh, in the Bible, we want to see how does that gel with the rest of the, of the Bible. We'll interpret one part of the canon in the light of the other. So from, from the Muslim perspective, uh, now uh, this canonical interpretation would mean that first and foremost we have the Quran, which is uh, for Muslims the word of God. So what the previous prophets taught must somehow uh, be compatible with what is now presented in the Quran as the major teachings uh, from God. Uh, I want to add here a side comment that uh, laws will change over time and the Quran bears uh, evidence to this as well. So God may give a specific law uh, to a certain people uh, in a specific place and time, uh, but then in a different time and circumstance that law may change. So there, there is a certain allowance for the change of law. But basic teachings and basic beliefs uh, we expect to be similar throughout the ages. So when Muslims interpret the prophets of the Bible, uh, we would want to interpret them in the light of the Quran and see how do the, their teachings gel with uh, the major teachings that we know from the Quran. Mm -hmm. A related question I have is about, you know, how, how can we be sure that either the Bible or the Quran gel with the, his, the real historical prophet? Because as you're saying, within the Islamic tradition, you know, the stories that we get of the prophet are trying to teach us a sort of lesson, right? Mm -hmm. they, they are the, the most morally upright individuals on earth. So how can we be sure that this is, you know, not some sort of uh, reimagination of the prophets? So. Uh, the, uh, the historical study of the prophets have come a long way, especially you know, after the Enlightenment period. And, and there's still a lot of work to be done uh, by, by Jews, by Christians, and by Muslims to um, uh, bridge the gap between theology and, and history. Uh, so for example, if we look at Abraham, how do we know what Abraham believed? And even if he existed, uh, this is a historical problem. Um, so, so there's a gap between the history and theology. In, in terms of theology, there's no doubt. Abraham was a prophet of God and he existed and he's the father of the monotheistic faiths. But historians will be asking for physical evidence uh, that a man named Abraham lived uh, at whatever time. And if the Bible places him at around 1800 BC, well, uh, where's the evidence uh, from uh, archaeological discoveries pertaining to that time? And one would find that it is lacking. So there was some discrepancy, and, and we can see this uh, re reverberating uh, in the study of all of the other prophets as well. Um, when we come to Jesus, there is a lot more historical study being done uh, on his person, uh, and we can see the reason why, because of the great importance that Jesus holds uh, in as a central figure in Christianity, uh, the, the most major world religion today. Uh, and of course, not only is Jesus per, per, perceived as having uh, preached a message which can follow regardless of whether he existed or not, uh, for the Christian faith, the actual existence of Jesus is uh, of uh, crucial importance. Uh, so a lot of historical study has been done regarding Jesus and uh, Christians are still trying uh, to show the relationship between in theology and history. Now Muslims come on the scene and we obviously have a similar difficulty as well. How do we prove that uh, the uh, historical Jesus uh, corresponds precisely to what uh, the Quran presents? And then if we ask about the historical study of the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace himself, how does the historical study of the Prophet Muhammad gel with what Muslims believe theologically about him? So, so this is a problem in itself. I don't know if we'll have enough scholars 
scope to uh, deal with this uh, in, in great detail, and, and that may better be left for another series, uh, just dealing with history, so that then it wouldn't be a, a, a comparison between the Quran and the Bible, but it will be a comparison between theology and history regarding all of the, all of the prophets. But That's still I an hope, interesting subject. Yes, and I hope that we'll have a chance to make some side comments about okay. the history as we deal with these great prophets. So tell me about which prophets are common to the Bible and the Quran. Are, are there many prophets? Yes, there are many. The Quran itself mentions some 25 uh, names of biblical prophets and uh, some of the most pro uh, prominent prophets from the Bible who are mentioned in the Quran include uh, uh, Noah, Abraham, um, uh, David, who is not regarded as a prophet in the Bible, but in the Quran he is, and so to his son Solomon. Um, uh, I can mention also Adam in this uh, regard, uh, though the Bible does not present him as a prophet, but uh, in, um, in Muslim theology he's considered to be a prophet. Um, we have also um, the prophet Jesus, on whom be peace, uh, the most uh, prominent prophet in the New Testament, uh, who is regarded as one of the great prophets of God in the Quran as well. So, you know, you've mentioned that the Bible doesn't mention, doesn't describe some of these individuals as prophets. Is there a reason for that? It's just a different theology, a different presentation of history. The, the history of the Bible is very complex. Uh, the Bible has been written by many persons over time, and um, uh, they had many different views about certain specific uh, issues. As for the, um, what, what, what is regarded as a prophet in Muslim theology is, is a person who receives information from God, and usually he communicates that information to others. Um, the Bible describes David as a man after God's own heart, and uh, he is credited with having composed uh, the Psalms, um, which uh, for Christians and Jews is a set of divine revelations. Uh, so uh, that, that, in essence, it means the same thing that Muslims mean when they speak of a prophet, one who receives information from God and then he is inspired to produce a piece of writing that definitely fits the Muslim understanding of a prophet, but for some reason he's not called a prophet in, in the Bible as far as I know. I'm really excited to start this series with you, Dr. Shabir. We will be starting with Prophet Adam, um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, me too. I'm looking forward to that.